Um, hello, everyone. Uh, we're super excited to see you guys today. Um, hopefully, uh, most, of, most of you already uh, here. Uh, so we're going to start. And what we're going to start is, uh, is actually our agenda. Because today we have very special webinar with very special guests. Um, sorry for sound. Uh, what we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about Saudi Arabia, product housing, how to leverage data and analytics because we are a data company, and also about uh, pricing strategies for Saudi market and how different uh, to any other market. And today we've got very special guest, uh, Hassam Ansari, uh, from uh, Ecom Nomads. Uh, Assam, uh, uh, Hussam, can you please uh, introduce yourself? All right. Uh, thank you, Daria, for inviting me here. Um, I has written in the front that I am a Saudi-based Pakistani entrepreneur, and uh, I have experience of uh, generating over $15 million plus sales for like 100 plus brands for myself and for my clients. By the way, the figure is going to touch 150 soon, inshallah. And uh, I have past experience of uh, operating in these e-commerce marketplaces for like six plus years. And uh, I am operating in Amazon US, UK, Saudi, UAE, and as well as known marketplaces. So yeah, and I am a co-founder of e-commerce nomads, which I'll be discussing a bit about it uh, too, uh, when it might turn, inshallah. Uh, perfect. And today, uh, from Sales Queen, we have me uh, as a co-founder uh, co and CEO, uh, and Elsa Natalia. Uh, she is um, our analyst, and she will uh, go uh, very deeply in uh, product hunting and analytics. So uh, let's go. Uh, why we are able to talk about KSA market? is actually because uh, we have we have enough data to talk about it. We are getting the data starting uh, August of 2020, uh, and we have data for Noon Shopify, Amazon, Nana, and Noon Grocery. Uh, today, we're primarily going to talk about Noon. And we have two solutions. First, the systematic which is solution for the big brands. And second, and we where we work with uh, those uh, brands for you to know about. And second is actually sales queen, uh, where we work with uh, like enterprise, uh, like e-commerce entrepreneur. Okay, uh, now I gonna um, give uh, opportunity to talk Natalia and she gonna uh, tell you about what like why they in this market and like what exciting about this market uh, for us specifically? Mm, yes, thank you so much, Daria, for the introduction. And it was said, my name is uh, my name is Nasali. I'm from Cellematics and Cell Screen. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining our webinar today. Uh, really nice to see you all. I will just share my screen. Uh, again, I will start where Daria finished with, uh, with her presentation. And just to show you guys what is what is interesting here uh, in this market. So uh, talking about uh, why, why Middle East and North Africa, why MENA MENA market? Well, it's really interesting when you see everything in comparison. So here, uh, basically on the screen, you can see the relative size of all the markets like MENA, LATAM, uh, USA. You can see that although MENA market is smaller in size, please take a look at the number of sellers in this market. So comparatively, there are so much less sellers than in the other market. So basically the volume of market makes sense. And also it makes sense in terms of that not too many sellers are selling in this market yet. So it's like a huge opportunity for those who want to enter in this market currently. So this is also interesting to analyze. Uh, the next thing that is interesting to analyze is the assumptions for growth. And you can see that for MENA markets, the growth assumption is 25%. So it is also huge. Understanding that, well, um, 
obviously now uh, e-commerce, everything is developing, but everything is developing in a different space. So the assumption for Middle East and North Africa that this market is, is a huge opportunity at the moment and is growing very rapidly. So why, why Saudi Arabia? Because we will be talking about Saudi Arabia today specifically. So Saudi Arabia is uh, the biggest country there in the region, has 40 million people population, obviously tremendous opportunities for, for growth there as well. Here you can see the marketplaces that are present in the region uh, that we will be talking about today. Uh, and uh, the next one uh, is when you enter in the marketplaces, you should choose the right sales channel and the niche. So this is specifically what we will be talking about today, choosing your niche, cho choosing the category where you will be selling and choosing the right products to sell. Right. So when there is, uh, when talking about the, the products specifically, uh, you, you have to understand that there are trending products, products that are trending specifically now at this time for, for whatever reason, because of some fashion, because people are more prone to buy healthy things or something like that. Uh, seasonal products would be products that are basically uh, subjected to some specific season. Like, let's say some products are more sold in summer. Obviously, some of them are sold in winter. There are other seasons that are connected to holidays like Ramadan. So this is something that you have to have in mind. Uh, basic products are just uh, what it is. They have basic products like white t-shirts that you will be able to sell at any time and they, they will be selling really well. And uh, now just one second, I want to uh, to stop the share and I want to, you guys to, to show everything on our website already, how it works specifically on our website. Uh, with just one moment. Uh, going directly from our website to check what are the trending products, okay? Uh, just to show you already how everything works, just reminding you our website is sell screen. Uh, so I will be sharing. So for example, here on sell screen, you can see the products. Uh, and analyze them uh, specifically each and every one. So talking about the, uh, the, the products that are trending currently, let's choose the example of one specific product, uh, this one, right? You can see that although for you, it might seem something like very normal, this product is, is currently trending. You can see in our product card, uh, basically, we collect all information about the product that is available on the marketplace. Here you can see what is the product, right? Uh, why it is trending? Uh, interesting question. It seems like something normal and usual that someone would might have had at home. It is, might be trending because there's a trend for microfiber. Like some people just want to have specific products with microfiber because it is considered, you know, better than the other materials. So basically this product, product might be trending because of that. Just for you to understand that you have to pay attention to some very specific things and to the very specific, you know, trends and fashions that are now for the products. So let's say this product, which seems super normal to you, is quite trending and has a really good revenue and, uh, and a lot of sales because of these, you know, microfiber, microfiber elements. Uh, about the products, what you can check on our website, basically, is uh, obviously the price, how many of them are in stock, which stores sell this product, how many sales they have. These are the sales, if you can see here, these are the sales only in the last seven days, right? You can click on 30 days, 60 as well, 90 days. And you can see that this product is really good, really selling well and is quite trendy, right? You can see the, the revenue and you can check another additional information about the product here. Uh, what is next? Interesting that we have mentioned before, some products are seasonal. One example of the seasonal product. Here you can see the sales and you can see uh, at what time there were more, most sales. So basically this product, as you might have guessed, uh, was seasonal for specifically for Ramadan. So you should always keep in mind that there are some specific, you know, holidays uh, or other, you know, seasons for the products. Like when the summer is coming, understanding and well, summer is hot. What do people use in summer? What do people mostly buy for summer, maybe preparing for summer? So understanding the seasonality for the products uh, is also crucial because this product, for example, you see how many sales there were uh, specifically in March, and now there are, there are no sales. No one, no one is buying it currently, right? So this was about you know seasonality uh, in products. Uh, we've been talking about products and how to see some trends, how to basically prepare yourself, how to choose the products. 
then uh, let's check uh, the niche, the category, how to choose the niche uh, where to enter. So understanding the category uh, and the niche for the marketplace is also crucial. You can check uh, on our website, you can check the categories that are presented to our marketplace, right? Here you can see, for example, all categories that we are gathering the data for. Uh, what does it what does it give you? Why why is it why is it important, right? So you can check, you can see the performance of each and every category and decide for yourself like which is going to work best for you. But there are some specific things that you have to understand. First of all, is the the volume altogether of the category, right? So what is the total revenue? How many sales there are? What is the average price? How many products there are? How many sellers uh, are presented to in, in this category specifically, right? It is uh, crucially important to analyze. Also, each and every category also have has its uh, seasonality. So now, for example, you can see that choosing the period of March, here we have chosen March, you can see how the categories were performing in March. You can see that probably there was not a, not a, good, not a good month compared to, to the other one. In terms of in terms of revenue for many categories, so uh, categories have seasonalities as well. You should consider it. The other thing you must consider while uh, when choosing the category is competition in the category, right? So you can see because the competition uh, 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 because the average price also depends on the competition in your category. Okay, uh, so the categories uh, these are like broad root categories. Each and every category has when you click on click on it, you can there is a subcategory in this category. So interesting, it's also interesting, always interesting to analyze all the data at hand, right? For example, here you can see looking at the numbers, right? Here you can see that uh, just the uh, home and kitchen category, half of this category is actually home appliances, right? But there are also other really well performing subcategories in this category that are interesting to to analyze for example kitchen and dining right when you click on it you go deeper into the into the subcategories and you can see everything about the specific subcategory you can analyze it right you can analyze with which kind of products you can enter and so on and so forth and what is also interesting not only the like the volume of the whole category, not only how it was performing in the specific month. Really interesting always to check when you're entering uh, your niche, when you're entering a specific category, when you want to choose the products to sell. What is interesting to know is the price distribution for these products, right? So just guys, take a look at this. This is price dis distribution for this subcategory in the kitchen and dining. Uh, what we can see here. Right. Uh, these are, for example, uh, how many products right are here for this price up until 100, and what was the revenue? And then you can see how many products are here from 100 to 200, and what is the revenue? So here, what can you like deduct from this? Right. That the 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 volume of revenue mm -hmm. is is well not very not falls very far ahead from the first one, but the number of products is just so much smaller. So for you to analyze even your like pricing strategy for your products and with what kind of products in which pricing category uh, to enter is also crucial. It's also quite important, right? For like everything that we pointed out now, I just important things for you to analyze when when entering uh, uh to sell in a specific marketplace okay so this was uh this was the price distribution uh also when talking about uh categories and entering a specific category uh, you can see, you can click on category products and you can see that for example for this specific category uh, we've been talking about like home appliances uh, uh the noon east for example is always in the first places in terms of uh, revenue for the products, right? So sometimes it's it's not really easy. Uh, it might not seem easy to compete uh, with the big uh, sellers like like Noon is when you're competing on Noon, right? So sometimes it seems like they have they have uh, huge revenues and they're selling all their products. Uh, just wanted to show you uh, in in my presentation again. Uh, why sometimes it, it would not be uh, true. Just one second, uh, checking, a, showing a presentation. One moment. Okay, here. Okay. Uh, so sharing the screen. Thank you guys. So basically, uh, if you can see, 
So sometimes it seems like noon uh, might want to dominate uh, some specific category, but if you check the data for the whole marketplace for Noon and Amazon, they actually do not absorb uh, smaller sellers. So Noon only has 16% uh, market share as a seller on Noon and Amazon has 17 uh, on Amazon. But you should always check about the specific category that you want to enter in. Of course, all this information is available uh, on cell screen. All this information is among the data that we collect and that we are able to, to see, to analyze uh, for, for all the sellers who are interested in entering these marketplaces. Uh, this is interesting that uh, we've been analyzing Russian marketplaces as well. And for one of the uh, quite prominent and the biggest Russian marketplace, which is called Wildberries, his retailer share has actually uh, diminished from 18. Now it's only 6.5%. So because uh, with the time, marketplaces understand that for them, it makes more sense not to you know work on selling their products, but to work on supporting the sellers that sell on these marketplaces right, about the prices we have already talked. So basically everything that we have concluded before, all the things that I just mentioned that are crucial for uh, analyzing uh, the category, the niche that you're entering, for analyzing the products that you might want to sell, the prices for the products. Uh, here all are unit, uh, unit economy metrics that you also have to keep in mind, like product cost, delivery to Saudi Arabia, custom clearance to Saudi Arabia, packing and labeling, local de delivery and market fees, right? So these are the things that you also have to have to keep in mind while uh, trying to uh, start working in a marketplace and selling your products. Uh, minimizing your risks is also quite important. Uh, what should you also think about uh, is requiring your licenses and documents, cho choosing categories, obviously that we have been talking about, calculating unit economy and uh, choosing the right products. So basically we can, uh, with our service sales screen, as I just mentioned, we can help you exactly with that. So if you're interested in uh, choosing the category and the niche to work in, choosing the right products, this is something that we can, uh, can do for you. So uh, what uh, is, what kind of product research can be done using our service? So uh, basically, in terms of in terms of revenue and in terms of the time span, you can discover some potential best selling products. If you try to see, for example, which products were selling, uh, uh, which new products were just introduced in the last month, and you can see you can sort them by revenue, and you can see if these products were were selling well, you can discover some really good products that are selling well and don't and don't have enough competition at the moment, right? You can check. If you're already selling something, you can check and uh, you can check your competition. You can validate your product success. You can see how your products are performing in terms of, uh, you know, pricing and sales, how many reviews they have, what is their content metrics. And you also create compelling products that, that sells, right? So uh, I just wanted to say um, thank you so much, guys, for your attention. I know it's been a lot of information. Uh, but I promise it's going to also help you a lot when you're trying to uh, trying to uh, start selling on the marketplace. So now I just wanted to introduce again uh, our guest speaker, uh, Hassam, and just give him a word. And yeah, thank you so much for your attention. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Natalia. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. And thank you for the wonderful presentation by your side. And uh, Thank you for this amazing tool, which uh, your team has made for us. So, uh, yeah, let me share my, okay, all right, let's show you. So, uh, first of all, let me begin with um, introduction of e-commerce nomads. So I will be discussing uh, how to win the e-commerce game in Saudi, all right, especially over noon. So I will start with the uh, introduction of e-commerce to Mares and a, a bit of my introduction. And then I will jump to how you can get the winning products, how you will hunt the winning products. And uh, then we will proceed with to uh, how you use the self screen tool to actually analyze and win the competition. And finally, I'll uh, discuss a bit about uh, pricing strategies over known. All right. 
So first of all, e-commerce nomads, uh, it's actually uh, a platform based in Saudi and uh, we are aspiring to enable our youth, uh, especially youth in Middle East, based in Middle East, uh, so they can uh, win the global game of e-commerce. And uh, uh, we are like operating for past one year. And my personal, uh, personally, I'm in the e-commerce field for past six plus years. So we have aspiring team which have experience over Amazon uh, worldwide. Uh, you can say Amazon Europe, Amazon North America, and Amazon Middle East as well as the noon middle east beside that we also have uh, uh, trainers and we have team of uh, which can operate which can manage which can guide you which can uh, explain you about sellland as well as shopify uh, and how to win in these games in the saudi market so uh, so i'm sorry i have give, given my bit introduction in the start so i think let's skip it for now and uh, let's we jump for, to the product hunting strategies of noon in case so how to find your winning product so to find your winning product we call it uh, product ideation all right or we can say it is product idea generation so when you are uh, uh, generating some product idea so there are several methods for it uh, but i will be discussing, uh, discussing a few of them uh, you can you can you can maybe think of 10 of methods for example uh, some of, of methods are showing in front of you, but beside that, you can also go to any physical store <clears throat> and probably you will find some uh, exciting product there. So product idea generation is not about that you can sell this product, but it's about that you are thinking to explore this product more. All right. So the first method to do this is bestseller analysis. So let me go to the noon. Uh, this is noon <clears throat> dashboard. Uh, noon uh, buyer side basically so here you can find the best seller tag all right so the best selling products uh, you can explore the best seller categories uh, for example you can go to furniture uh, you can go to any other category which uh, natalia have explained that you can explore the selling screen tool to see which categories have the more revenue with lesser number of products which category has lesser competition and you can explore this category and you can find your relevant product here all right and now which product to pick among them i will discuss it later we call it product criteria so you will see which of these products fall in your product criteria so from there you will get some idea that i can probably sell this product for example in product criteria we can say that we don't usually work because uh, most of you are not, right now are small and medium sized sellers right so you may think that uh, you don't want to engage in something which is too large, which have very high freight, uh, or you can say you uh, you won't you want indulge in something which is breakable, which is hard to handle. So this is the basic product criteria which I'll discuss later. So you will just explore these best sellers and you will get some product ideas and shortlist your products for your further evaluation. All right. So the next method is mega deals evaluation. Uh, when you go to the home page again, you can see that uh, many sellers have uh, put some deals on their products. All right. So you can find there. I let it go to the home page. All right. Best, best, uh, best deals are showing in the front, in the home page. All right. So you can find there what are the trending products, what are the best selling products. These are the deals. All right. You can find here which products are selling well and you can get some product idea from there similarly you can go to the tra trending uh, trending products or trending deals exp uh, you can explore the trending uh, trending deals and uh, lastly you can also go to the sell screen tool i guess the sell screen tool part has been well explained by uh, natalia i was thinking to go to the sell screen and show you how you can explore products there for example uh, let me show you something uh, so this is the sell screen tool right and for example, we are thinking to go uh, with the category of home and kitchen. So I have filtered the home and kitchen category. Now you can sort the sort the products with respect to their revenue. You can sort the products with respect to their uh, sales. Sales are the number of units they are being sell, sold. Uh, you can sort by the reviews. You can sort it by diff many different ways. All right. Uh, you can uh, uh, sort them by the stock. So more, more is the stock, 
it means the product is selling more all right so you can sort it by different ways and if you are some excel geek you can export the list from here and once the list has been exported you can uh, apply different kind of filters and you can for example you are thinking to not to sell any product which is selling which selling price is uh, more than 500 you can put this in the excel file and uh, uh, you can filter out all the products which have selling price below 500 so you can use the sell screen tool uh, let me show you the bit part of the excel tool all right so let me change the screen all right so this is the excel i have exported it from the sell screen uh, don't get scared from it it's not that difficult or hard to use i will show you how see it's very simple you put the filters here all right you put the filter here and for example i i want to sort these products with respect to the revenue i'll sort them in ascending orders for example all right or i can sort them in descending order now i want to filter those products which are selling uh, below 500 saudi real because i don't want to go in uh, high selling products all right so i can simply apply filter here less than and put here 500 right so it will show me all the products which are selling below 500 now i will explore all these products i will get some product ideas from there i will i am seeing how uh, which products are selling with high revenues uh, obviously you can uh, you can't always be the higher revenue products because the maybe they are giant sellers they are big seller for example the noon is for example Xiaomi. so you will go down and you will find different products here and you will see that if this product set on your criteria which i'm going to share later then you will uh, obviously explore it further if it's not uh, fulfilling your criteria you will just leave it all right so there are several different methods to generate a product idea let me share the moon screen again. So you have to uh, explore different products. You have to shortlist different products. You have to just work on product ideation first. All right. Once you have selected some products, now you will move toward product idea validation. Now, what is product idea validation? Product idea validation is that you have shortlisted like 50 to 100 products, for example you or your team member or your virtual assistant anyone now you will see that which of these products are fulfilling your basic criteria those products which are fulfilling the basic criteria completely you will shortlist them further for further evaluation all right so what's the criteria the simple criteria is in front of you you can take a screenshot of it uh, it's it's actually a recommended criteria it's not that that only these products are uh, selling well on noon or any other marketplace but it's a recommended criteria from us uh, based on our experience on the noon so your margin should be a minimum 35 percent uh, obviously higher the margin uh, more viable is the product but it should be minimum 35 percent because when you are dealing in saudi you have to pay vet right you have to deal with vet and that will decrease your margin from 35 percent to around 20 percent and then you have more operational cost uh, which will uh, give you net to uh, around you can say eight to ten percent so the gross margin should be 35 percent minimum uh, your selling price should be 55 it can be below it uh, but rec recommended from our side is 50 and you can go with products over 100 saudi real uh, but uh, these products would may be expensive for you. Uh, they will cost you more. The, uh, their ex inventory will be expensive for you and you have to handle their returns too, right? So expensive products are difficult to manage. If you have the budget, if you have the, uh, you can say, uh, risk appetite, then you can go with higher selling, uh, higher sales price product. Uh, such products should have uh, minimum sales around two to 300 per month. All right. Uh, uh, two to uh, sorry, two to three hundred per week. Uh, it's it it will boil down to like thousand or thousand plus per month. So these products are selling well. Uh, they are selling like twenty to thirty units per day. Uh, it's not that you you can't go products below that. You can go them if you are thinking that all other criteria is being fulfilled and just the sales are a bit low. Then you can obviously go with them. 
All right. Uh, next is the material type. The material type, it shouldn't be fragile. It shouldn't be breakable. All right. And it shouldn't be uh, something which are uh, battery operated because they have extra regulations with them. And uh, better off, they, they, they shouldn't be uh, health and beauty related products. They shouldn't be uh, food related products if you don't have the relevant licenses. If you have the relevant licenses for it, then obviously you can sell them. Uh, the rating, the you are normally referred as stars, the ratings should be minimum 3.5 plus because those products which have rating below 3.5, it means these products are by nature uh, deemed as negative by the customers. And uh, once the ratings are down in the noon, those who are selling on noon for quite some time, they know that the rating and the seller feedback are very important over noon. So you shouldn't be going with any such product which will ruin your overall brand on the noon, all right? Because you have to take care of the overall your noon account and a single product can ruin your account. So you have to be careful about it that those products which naturally attract negative reviews because of their use or because of their claims, you should avoid such kind of products, all right? Stock count uh, is basically uh, the FBN stock count of the sellers. You can uh, see the stock count as well as sales over sell screen tool. So the stock count should be better off 1000 plus of all the FBN sellers combined. If it's 1000 plus, it means that the product is selling quite well. All right. And the variations, variations are the variants of the product. Like for example, uh, you are selling barbecue gloves, so they can be blue in color, they can be black in color. And the same seller on the same uh, on the same product detail page, it may be selling multiple variations. So try to get uh, those products. Try to uh, get uh, you can say try to dive in those products which have less variations, because more are the number of variations and more uh, will be hassle to analyze the sales and analyze the trends. And uh, you have to buy more inventory for all kind of variations. So there are different problems associated associated with it. So try to go with less variation products, all right? So this is the basic uh, product criteria. And uh, I'm not saying that you can't uh, break this criteria, obviously uh, you can make your custom criteria, but that's the recommended e-commerce nomads criteria for product hunting over known, all right? So first we will go with product ideation, product idea generation, then we will go with product idea validation, all right? The next uh, in the game is uh, the leveraging the data of sell screen to validate all those shortlisted products which you have uh, found on uh, noon by this all these methods. All right. So uh, first of all, if you go with the sell screen tool, uh, it provides you with a stock count. All right. It's with, it provides you with GMV, which you can refer as revenue per month of the seller, and it provides you with many other variables type. Uh, insights uh, of the product, all right? Uh, sell screen uh, provides you about the trends of the product, which Natalia has discussed very well. The, the product is seasonal the, or the product is evergreen. It sells very well all over the uh, year or it sells only in some spe specific season. So you can go with the seasonal products too, uh, obviously, but you have to analyze that uh, how much stock you have to uh, take from the supplier and uh, when to take it from the supplier and uh, you, don't take uh, like you are selling it all around the year. So you can go with seasonal product, but with bit precaution. So the sell screen tool help you analyze the fluctuations in the trends, as well as the sell screen tool have a keyword uh, database. And uh, that's remarkable and that's very excellent because before this tool, we were, we were facing very difficulty to analyze or to find out the keywords of our product. Because what are the keywords? Keywords are actually the gateway to your product. Uh, people, uh, keywords are the search terms of the customers of the buyers to find your product and if you don't know about the keywords of your product you can't uh, beat the competition all right so sell screen tool provide the keyword insights right uh, let me show you how you can find keywords for example uh, i am uh, here in this tab for example i i want to sell for example a product uh, chopper right so i will just search chopper here so it will give me with a number of keywords for my product. And you can analyze the search uh, queries is basically the number uh, of times the people have searched it, or, or you can say it's, it's search volume, and it's showing you the competition is high or low, it's showing you the how many revenue this specific keyword is generating for the sellers. 
and you can find several different keywords related to Chopper. Now you can use these keywords uh, to analyze uh, the trends in the market. You can use these keywords to uh, optimize your product detail pages. You can put these keywords in the title, in the bullets, and you can use these keywords to run product listing ads over uh, noon, right? Uh, before noon was not uh, offering any kind of uh, ads, but now it's offering as PLA. PLA is a basic, uh, basically a pay-per-click pay model uh, where uh, when a buyer click on your ad, and then you will be charged over it. So the PL, to run PLA ads, you need the keywords. So the sales screen tool is obviously providing all the keywords. So after the product idea valuation, now you use the sell screen tool to further analyze your product. All right. Let me show you now on the tool how you will further analyze your product. For example, uh, let me go to Noon first and take some product from there. All right. Uh, for example, let's say I'm, uh, let's say, for example, I'm planning to sell this hand blender, all right? So I will copy this, put it into the home screen of sell screen. All right. It's showing me the product selling price, the sellers who are selling these products, the total revenue generated by this product, total sales, and uh, you can see that if I go to the subcategory here, I can find my more competitor which are selling this same product. All right. So hand blender is being sold by all of these sellers and each of this product detail page has ma many sellers in it. Right. So I will analyze, I will find out, I will see the sales, I will see the pricing, I will see uh, how much stock they are uh, keeping with them in the FBN. And then I will analyze, maybe I want to go this with product or not, all right? So for example, I am getting this product from the manufacturer in 150 Saudi real, but the selling price is around 199 Saudi real and uh, for the, this four pieces set and other sellers are selling the higher uh, uh, pieces, right? So for example, I want to target this four pieces well. Now my manufacturing cost is much more obviously than this guy because I have to pay the noon fees to FBN fees and the referral fees, and I have to uh, pay to the freight forwarders. So it means that this product is not viable for me, at least for me, because I am a medium size seller and I, I'm not getting the required manufacturing price. So you will use this tool to find out that how many sellers are selling this product? What's the competition? What's the keyword search volume? Is this product which the, which which you are just thinking to sell on noon, is this viable to sell on noon as per the demand or as per the competition or not? All right. So you have to use this tool in several different ways. Let me show you one more way. So for example, I'm in the home screen again. And uh, uh, let me filter out a category again, for example, home and kitchen, all right. Was filtered, I will export the list. Uh, when I will export the list, I will open it over Excel file, right? Now, let me share the Excel again. So this is the Excel file which uh, I will open, all right. Now, for example, uh, I want to sell uh, again the, let's take the product uh, chopper, all right. So I will write chopper here in the filter. Now you can see all the choppers in the whole known marketplace has been filtered for me. All right. Now I want to analyze that who is the dominant seller here? How much percentage is he getting? For example, right, right. So I will use this Excel and I will open a new tab. I will copy this, uh, for example, till revenue. Uh, you can take the whole list, obviously. I'm just uh, trying to demonstrate here something. Let me zoom in. All right. So now I can uh, make pivot tables from this Excel data. All right. I'm just showing you the power of the cell screen tool, how it's helping us to uh, build uh, those brands which are selling over a million Saudi real uh, annually. 
All right. So now I will I will just create a pivot table here. Uh, I will select the range of the table. Uh, then I will select uh, the position of the pivot table. All right. All right. Now I can select, for example, the product name and I can select from here the product revenue. All right. So, so here you can see the product name and the revenue table is there. All right. Now I can change the field settings to, for example, um, percentage of trend total. All right. So here you can see uh, I have changed the revenue into percentage using this Excel. All right. So here you can see that the 20% uh, percent or 32% percent share is belong to these two sellers. So this kind of analysis, you can run this kind of analysis for pricing. You can run this kind of analysis for, for example, uh, I, can, I can differentiate how many of them are selling four pieces, how many of them are selling six pieces, how many of them are selling eight pieces. I can then differentiate between them that which of them is getting the most sales, which of them, the four pieces one or the six pieces one. So you can play around with this Excel file. And obviously this Excel file, you are getting it from the very tool, sell your screen. All right. So you will analyze your product and you will take your decision based on data. See on the e-commerce marketplaces, you can't create the demand. All right. You have to just follow the demand. What's in demand, you have to supply that. So to, in order to supply the right thing, uh, now it's not that the, the demand is, or the, for example, the top selling product or the noon is, I guess, iPhone. All right. So it doesn't mean that you are, you will start selling iPhone because it has much demand. It's selling 4 million in, in a month. It, it's not like that. You have to find your sweet spot. All right. You have to find your some optimum kind of product, which has not too less margins, which has not too much sales. All right. So you have to find some kind of optimum product. And then as per your budget, you have to take informed decision based on this data. So it's not that, that you will be using this tool only in the start of your business, because in the noon marketplace, you have to keep continuously adding your products. You have to keep building your portfolio. You have to keep building your brand. All right. So maybe you are launching one product a month, maybe two or three products a month, and you keep adding more and more products. All right. Because this marketplace is not as huge as the US or UK marketplace where you can maybe survive with one to two products, but here to survive, to build a large account. And, and as you know, that uh, in the Middle East, the competition is not too high as of now. So you have to build a portfolio of your products. So you need the tool continuously over, uh, over your selling over known. Moreover, you need the tool to analyze the pricing trends. All right, you need the, need the tool to keep analyzing what your competitors are introducing more in the market and what they are selling and what they are not selling. All right, so it's a continuous need of the tool. It's not just that, just that you find the product, you hunt the product, you use the tool and you just leave it. You have to uh, get the tool uh, for like longer period of time. All right. Uh, so, uh, obviously due to time constraint, I can't go deeper. I, I will, I, I, I have tried, I have tried to explain much uh, things, but obviously I can't, uh, uh, just, uh, you can say the summarize the whole noon business in 30 to 40 minutes, but I have tried my best. So, uh, last thing to discuss is optimizing pricing strategies for Saudi market on noon. All right. When it comes to optimizing your pricing over noon, there are two you can say that there are two periods, all right? First period is before launching your product over noon, all right? Second period is after your launch, all right? So before you are in to launch your product, all right? You are analyzing the product, you are analyzing the margins, you are analyzing everything. First thing you have to do, you have to first analyze all of your competitors and find out that at which lower price you can sell your product with some kind of unique selling proposition, your USP, which you can say that the buyers are attracted to buy your product. All right. So number one. Number two, you have to analyze all the competitors 
and check their selling prices with respect to their product. All right. And then you have to find out that at which price the customers have are buying the most. All right. By the by using the pivot tables, you can find out. All right. It's not that difficult. For, uh, why I'm saying this? See, uh, buyers sometimes don't want to buy cheap products only. All right. And sometimes buyers don't want to buy very expensive products. So they are kind of looking uh, such kind of product which have some better quality in fair, uh, in fair selling price. All right. So you, it's not that you can only sell the products in the lowest of the price. No, it's not that you should sell the products in the highest of the price because increasing your price much will obviously bring down your sales. When your sales are down, uh, you will not rank on different kinds of keywords. Uh, and it, it will be difficult for you to keep the pace. All right. And you don't sell very low at very low selling price. Why? Because you have to safeguard your margins. Right, you have to attain minimum 35% gross. So you have to find out some optimum kind of pricing. All right, which customers are buying the most. So you will use the tool, you will use the Excel files to find that optimum pricing. Number three, you have to find such kind of products which don't have price wars. For example, some kind of products you can uh, open the sell screen. Let me show you again. Uh, for example, let me open this iPhone and I can open price here. So you can see uh, the price of the buy box throughout the year, right? So you have to see, you have to avoid such kind of products which are showing a decreasing trend of the sales price. It means the product might have price for, all right? You have to avoid such kind of products. So the first step is pre-launch, all right? Second step is the post-launch. Post launch, you have to add, keep analyzing your competitors by the same tool, by the same method. And you have to keep analyzing whether they are decreasing the price, whether they are increasing the price. For example, in the period of high demand, you can increase, up, increase the price a bit, all right? Because in the season of high demand of any product, uh, you will be selling irrespective of your price, but no, don't increase it way too high obviously the customers won't want buy it from you but you can increase it to you can say a reasonable amount right for example your product is of 100 saudi real you may can increase it to 105 or 110 saudi real maximum all right and similarly in the case of low demands in the period of low demands you have to decrease your price so in short you have to maintain your sales velocity and your margins all right so these are two these uh, these two factors will play the role in deciding your pricing post launch so post launch you are more concerned about the sales velocity as well as the margins you so you will keep playing around your pricing your selling price of your products when you have launched the products and keep analyzing your competitors keep analyzing their friends and keep analyzing what they are doing so that obviously you can beat them in the game all right so uh, that was all about from my side over the pricing. And uh, lastly, if you are interested to build your, uh, our team to help you build your brand over Amazon or Noon, uh, it can be Amazon US, UK, it can be Saudi, it can be Noon. Or you are interested to learn from us, you can reach out to us at email or you can uh, visit or explore our website. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Natalia, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, all right. thank you so much for this amazing presentation. It was it was really insightful. Yeah, I think it will be extremely useful also for our listeners. So if you guys have uh, any questions, you could just uh, put them into the chat. We will respond them in the end of this meeting. So I think yes, the presentation uh, was was really really insightful. So you should you guys should take notes because Hassan, our speaker, he's he's really successful in this field. So yes, you should definitely listen to him. Just one last thing that I wanted to uh, to show you a few slides also from our side. Um, just wanted to uh, to share. Uh, if you guys, if you guys are interested uh, also in, in our service, this was described today, if you guys are interested to, well, to prepare yourself for, you know, analyzing your niche, the categories, the products, everything that we have concluded today, we have some special prices for those who attended the, the webinars today. If you're interested, just check it out. 
Uh, again, for your understanding, uh, obviously there are many, many things to consider when starting your own business. As Hassan said, like there is a lot of uh, a lot of uh, opportunity. Obviously, in this market, there is not too, too much competition. So now would be a good time to enter, but also you should do so wisely. You should definitely uh, consider many, many factors and many metrics uh, before starting your business. Our service can also help you with that. Uh, if you would be interested, again, some special prices for those who attended the webinar. Also, guys, if you want to have a free seven-day trial, here's a promo code. Uh, you could also check it out. Uh, again, when you do the free trial, you can just try the service by yourself. Basically, everything that we have shown you today for trying to analyze the niche to enter uh, the categories, how they are performing, what are the products, uh, just to compare the competition. You can do it by yourself as well. Um, obviously, if you already have experience in some of the categories, it would be interesting to start with this specific category. It would make a lot of sense. Uh, if you don't have any experience, just check the categories just the same way that we have been doing for you today. Uh, so yes, please, for those who attended the webinar, here's a promo code. Uh, you can also check out our free trial. Here are the contacts for, the, for our CEO, Daria. Okay, again, if you guys have any questions, if you are interested in some other specific things, uh, please contact us. We'll be really happy to help. And yes, these are our other contacts. Here you have the phone number, uh, the email, and so on and so forth. You can, you can take a picture, do a screenshot. Please contact us if you have any questions. I really hope this webinar was, was useful for you. I hope you got some insights about how to start your business, about how to choose uh, your niche, how to choose the products. I think we've been talking about many, many things today that were extremely interesting. So guys, if you have any questions, I saw that we already had some. Uh, if you guys have any questions, we'll be really happy to answer all uh, together. So I see there was a question from Mostafa, where do you get this data from and how are you able to get it? Uh, if this is a question about um, a cell screen, I can respond to that. So where do we get the data? Basically, we collect uh, the data that is available uh, for public. This is the public data. We don't request the data, let's say from noon. We collect the data that is available. Uh, and how are we doing it? Uh, we have uh, some, we have a software, we have some robots who are collecting the product data uh, every day. And we collect data of all the products available on the marketplace. What do we collect? Basically everything, like the price, stock, revenue, uh, content for the product, reviews, and so on and so forth. So compiling this data, uh, you see the data that we, we, have been, uh, we have been showing you today, right? So all the product data, and we collect it daily, every day. So we update it um, every day. Uh, the next question is, what's from Whitney? What is the confidence index on these numbers? If you mean, uh, if by, by confidence uh, index, if I understand you correctly, if you mean the margin of error, uh, normally, uh, again, we, are, uh, we provide analytics, we provide data. Uh, we say it cannot be 100% uh, correct uh, because of you know, many, uh, many things because sometimes even the sellers themselves don't fill in the data correctly. So normally we give the margin of error uh, of uh, five to fifteen percent, again depending on the marketplace. Uh, if you have like more questions, if you have questions regarding a specific marketplace, again please do reach us out. We are always uh, super happy to help. Uh, another question I see here from Muhammad: uh, What documents are required to start selling uh, on Amazon and Noon Saudi Arabia marketplace from Pakistan? If you have some, could could also reply that if, because you already had the experience. So from personal experience, uh, which documents uh, would be required? Which kind of kind of? I think there are some kind of licenses that we have to would have to obtain. Yeah, let me uh, tell you uh, that uh, actually you can't uh, open the account from Pakistan, although you can operate the account from Pakistan. Uh, but to open account on Noon Saudi, you need Saudi uh, basically trade license or manufacturing license. All right. And uh, same goes for the UAE. Uh, so, for example, in case you want to uh, sell in Saudi based on UAE LLC, you can't sell in Saudi based on UAE LLC. For the noon Saudi, you need uh, Saudi LLC. And for the uh, noon UAE, you need uh, UAE LLC, all right? 
first of all, and then uh, you need, uh, there are several different documents. Uh, we have several videos over it over our platform. Uh, you need the trade license, you need the VAT registration certificate, uh, and uh, you need uh, the owner ID, and you need the IBAN letter from the bank. These are the four documents required for to sign up over noon. And it's not a very difficult process. It's, it's an easy process. Having said that, uh, to establish uh, LLC in Saudi, it's a bit expensive for overseas foreigners. Um, it's uh, it's uh, much cheaper for local Saudis. All right. So uh, you can try to find some sort of local Saudi part partner whom you can work with, or you can find uh, those investors all right, uh, who are already established in Saudi and doing different kind of businesses, and you can uh, partner up with them to establish your own account. Or or uh, the last option is to establish your own LLC, which can cost you around 100 to 150 Saudi real, 100 to 150K Saudi real per year. All right. So you can establish your own LLC, uh, but at last you need a local LLC to establish your known account or known Saudi. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, we have here another question, how do we source products uh, in Saudi Arabia marketplaces and what about the tax related issues in Saudi Arabia? Uh, if our guest also could, could expand on the tax related issues, are there any, uh, how do, uh, what do we do about taxes in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, uh, first of all, you can, you can, you have two, uh, two ways to source the products. Uh, you can source the products locally or you can import the products. You can import the products from uh, United Arab Emirates, UAE, or you can import the products from China, all right? So mostly uh, who are selling private label products over noon, they use to import the products either from China or if they can find the relevant factory locally or in the United Arab Emirates. And uh, second thing is about taxes. Uh, so uh, I think if you if you are registering your LLC in Saudi, uh, you have to deal with taxes. You have to deal with VAT. You have to deal with the corporate taxes. It's a more question more related to the accountant. But I can simplify you over it that uh, the VAT of Saudi is fifteen percent, uh, and you can uh, claim VAT which you have paid over the import or you have paid uh, over some kind of services. But eventually you have to take VAT from the customers and pay it to the government, all right? So regardless of anything, you have to pay VAT. The only one condition of not paying VAT is that you are not selling more than 3,75,000 Saudi Rials yearly, all right? In the last 12 months, if you have not sold 3,75,000 Saudi Rial, then you can uh, be VAT exempted from the government. Otherwise, you have to pay the VAT. So you have to pay the VAT and the foreign owners also have to pay the corporate tax of 20%. So you have to deal all with these taxes and you can't just open, for example, in the case of Amazon, we can open the Amazon account on the ID, right? Maybe you don't need VAT there. Maybe you don't need a legal entity there. But in the case of Noon, you need a legal entity. So you have to obviously deal with the VAT. And in the case of import, you can import yourself because obviously you would be having the trade license. You are selling on Noon or you can use some kind of traders who can import on your behalf and uh, just uh, provide you with the products in the Saudi. Perfect, thank you so much for your response. Again, just wanted to mention then for, that for those who are interested in obtaining licenses, you could also get in touch with us. We could share some contacts of our partners who will be able to help you guys, okay? Uh, so another question that I see here uh, from Safras, we have a few questions. First, where are you able to get the data for sales screen? How do you ensure the accuracy? We have already responded then before. Okay, so this, questions, uh, this question we have already responded. The second one uh, would be, do you have a list of regulatory free products which can enter Saudi Arabia and sold by uh, uh, noon? Um, uh, do you, like, are with, in our service, I don't think we have this kind of list. Uh, maybe Hassan, you can recommend some specific uh, products that are regulatory free would be good for selling uh, on noon. Uh, sorry, Natalia, maybe I have missed your question. Sorry, can you please repeat again? Uh, yeah, so uh, one of uh, one of the questions is about the regulatory free products which can enter Saudi Arabia and be sold on noon. If you have any specific uh, recommendations for the products that are uh, regulatory free. Uh, see, actually, um, 
usually the products uh, don't have regulation as such, especially, uh, for example, home and kitchen furniture products, they don't have any such kind of regulation. Any general trading license person can import it. All right. The regulations comes when there are skincare products, uh, when there are food related products, like when there are sensitive products. All right. The, the, the noon marketplace, the Amazon marketplace, they do want the licenses from you of Saudi Food and Drug Authority, for example. And uh, the import authorities, they also want the custom authorities. They also want the licenses, same licenses from you. So generally, generally most of the products, you can import them without any issue. But some of the products which are sensitive, which are related to human health, like food and like skincare products, you have regulations in them. Similarly, if you are importing the precious metals, you have obviously regulations in them. So generally, uh, there is no as such regulation. You just have to arrange the custom clearance, clearance agent and you just have to import it on your documents. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. The third question from Safras was, was what are the pricing packages on your platform? Great to know. Uh, okay, I already showed them uh, in our presentation. You can also check out the pricing on our website. But as I mentioned specifically for those who are attending the webinar today, uh, there would be, uh, we have prepared some discounts, so uh, it would be great if you guys could, could uh, take this opportunity to, um, to explore our service. Uh, I could show the presentation again uh, if you'd like, and there will be some some packages. Uh, again, I will share it now. Let's go over some some other questions. Uh, well, Mustafa asked also, could you please elaborate again why you did not recommend selling products that are in the health and beauty industry, taking skincare products, for example? Well, as our guest just mentioned, because these products have have regulations, so it was also explained quite in detail in the previous question, I guess. Uh, Whitney also asked, does the tool offer a market size estimated by category brand? Uh, yes, exactly. This is something that we tried to show today. Uh, so going uh, into the, um, the on the left hand side in our tool, you would have the, um, the category section and we would go into the category. You can explore the market size of any like root category, big category, and you can go deeper into the sub categories and explore the market size of each of them, not only the market size, but all the metrics related to, you know, revenue, sales, how many products there are, how many sellers are in this category or subcategory. And also what is interesting to see uh, for uh, categories, subcategories, you can also see which sellers and which brands are presented into in this category and, um, and subcategory. Okay, so this is something that you can also check uh, with our tool. Uh, do you guys have any more questions? Uh, responding to the previous question, I'm going to share again um, our presentation with the, with the pricings. Okay, so just for you guys to see again, just a few things here. Again, yes, these are special uh, pricing packages that we have for those who are present on our webinar today. Okay, so if you guys are interested, uh, these are the discounts that we can offer you. So please do get in touch. And yes, definitely we'll be happy to, to help you out. Again, today was explained a lot about the tool that we have. Uh, again, if you are interested in having another free demo, if you still are not sure how to use a tool, we always offer a free demo with the analyst. Uh, for our clients, so please, yes, do uh, do stay in touch if you're interested to, to explore more about our service. Uh, do you guys have any questions? I don't see any questions there on the, on, on the dashboards. If you guys have uh, any more questions, I'll be very happy to, to help. Uh, okay, I see we have uh, uh, another question uh, from Arsan. Trademark and LCFI required to start for Amazon in Saudi. I think our guest could help me out with that again. So Hassan, if you would uh, answer the question, please. Yeah, sure. Um, to sell on Amazon, you don't require as such any LLC or trademark. You can sell it without uh, these. Uh, actually, there are different models to uh, to establish over Amazon or Noon, you can just you can just resell some brands, all right. So when you are reselling something, you don't need any kind of trademark, obviously. And uh, when it comes to LLC, so Amazon allows you to open your account on your individual IDs. They don't want as such LLC, although you can open the account on LLC too. So in the case of Noon, obviously you are, you will need the LLC, and the trademark is not necessary. But if you are 
going to launch a private label brand over Amazon or Noon? Obviously, you would try to protect it. You will try to protect the name. You will try to protect that no other competitor can take the name and trademark behind you. So it's always better if you are going with a private label model. So either do a trademark internationally with the WIP office and or do the trademark locally with the Saudi IPs and uh, then launch your private label otherwise you can uh, obviously face uh, uh, such things which you can't you would you won't be ex expecting and uh, second uh, a question i have seen uh, natalia was that uh, why i'm not recommending the uh, skin care category i just want to clear on it uh, this see uh, usually i was addressing uh, addressing people who are small to medium sized sellers and who are going to start their journey over no if you are already established brand number one number two you have a good budget to obtain all the relevant licenses to obtain uh, all the uh, relevant uh, approvals from the authorities obviously the the beauty category the skincare category it's a very excellent category uh, one of the top uh, trending category of the noon is the health and skincare so you can go with these categories, but I was just addressing the normal folk who, who are just starting and they are just finding new products. But if you think you already have all the licenses or you can get all the licenses, then these are one of the best categories to go with. All right. So I'm not saying that don't go with them. I'm just saying the new people to just, I'm just saying the new people to just avoid them. Okay, yeah, thank you so much for, for clarification. Yeah, thank you. This was extremely useful. Uh, do you guys have any more questions for, for us, uh, for our guests? Uh, okay, Whitney asked just now, do you have some sort of partner program with uh, agencies? Uh, well, uh, definitely, please do contact us. I think uh, probably, um, uh, yes, just contact us via, via email. And yes, we can we can definitely uh, we can definitely talk about it and uh, yes, explore the, the opportunities to work together. So please do get in touch. I can show our contacts uh, again now with the presentation. Uh, so yes, this was a reply for for Whitney. Here will be our contacts. I'm going to share my screen again. So please yes, do uh, uh, do get in touch with us, and we can explore how we can how we can work together. Uh, yes, do contact us. Tell us about your business. Tell us what your goals are, and yes, let's see let's see how we can collaborate. Okay. Uh, so yes, um, just waiting for some more questions. If you guys have any questions, just please do type them. Uh, we have uh, again, we have been talking uh, today about uh, Saudi Arabia, about e-commerce, about how to choose uh, the niche, the category, the right products. Uh, it was great uh, to to see you guys today. It was great to have this uh, to have this webinar. Thank you so much for for coming. Uh, I don't see any more questions for now. I think we can wait like a little bit more. If you guys uh, after the webinar, if you guys are interested again uh, for if in trying our service, if you have any more questions later, again I just shared our contacts. Please do reach out. Uh, tell us what you think. Maybe you have some specific feedback. Maybe after a while analyzing everything and processing all the information that we had for you today, you would have more questions. So yes, uh, uh, we and our guests also, we have shared our contacts. If you guys are interested in something uh, something specific, so yes, please do reach out and we'll be always happy to, to have a conversation with you. Uh, Whitney asked, does the tool help gather information and advertising performances from AdLab on Noon and other metrics from reports provided by Noon, like conversion rate, etc.? So yes, Whitney, please do reach out to us uh, via email. We can discuss um, we can discuss everything, basically. So uh, what we showed you today, yes, uh, is, uh, is cell screen, is a specific tool that we have. Uh, to work with the marketplaces. Our company has also a different tool which provides maybe a little bit more of uh, specific tools also for analyzing for, for bigger sellers and brands. So please, Whitney, do reach out. We'll be really happy to have a conversation with you. Uh, and yes, uh, all the rest also, if you have any other questions, you will be really happy to, to get in touch with you. 
please do reach out. Uh, another comment, thank you so much for today. It was super useful. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, yes, and the, the last question, trade license costs in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Hassan, if you could be uh, so kind to share if you are if you are aware of what is the trade license cost in Saudi Arabia currently? Uh, yeah, uh, the trade license cost, uh, as I have mentioned, that uh, for some local Saudi, it's it's too low, it's very low, and for overseas foreigners uh, or for the local foreigners even, it's it's quite high. So uh, if you want to get that estimated, to, so for example, if the local Saudi can establish the trade license in 10,000 Saudi Riyal, uh, a foreigner would, uh, it would take like 100,000 Saudi Riyal to establish the trade license. Moreover, uh, specifically the trade license, uh, there are two kinds of categories. Uh, one are the services and was the trade license. The trade license, uh, you have to show uh, uh, like 30 million Saudi Riyal in your assets. All right. So you have to show that then you can get the trade license as a foreigner but the local Saudi they can get that easily and uh, uh, one thing uh, I just uh, forgot to mention Natalia that uh, our the uh, uh, batch is going to start of the training over noon and how to do this all product ideation and the product evaluation and how to launch your product and how to st handle your product post launch it's uh, it's inshallah going to start in uh, June maybe so anyone interested in the training they can contact us at the provided email uh, which I have already shared uh, this email contact at ecommerce nomads.com. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your reply. Uh, the last question here is how, how accurate is the data provided by sales screen? I already commented on it. So we normally give the margin of error from 5 to 15% depending on the marketplace. Okay. So it depends just on the, which marketplace you're interested in because we don't only work with Noon. We work with many other marketplaces. So if the mar er, margin of error is 5 to 15%, so basically, yes, the accuracy would be uh, you know, from eight eighty five percent and up, it can never be hundred percent, but it's pretty close. Okay, uh, so uh, do you guys have any more questions? Because I think our webinar is about to to end soon. Uh, so yes, thank you all uh, so much for for participating. Again, I I hope it was uh, really useful and insightful for you. I think we've. Uh, uh, we've just shared so much information uh, and so many uh, interesting things about what, how to work uh, with the marketplaces uh, in Saudi Arabia, how to choose the products, how to analyze the niche, the competition, and so on and so forth. Please do reach out again if you have any questions. Do reach out to us uh, if you have uh, if you want to uh, have a free trial. Again, we also had shares had shared it already. Uh, so yes, thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you so much to, to our guest, Hassan. It was amazing to have you today. Your presentation was extremely detailed and insightful. And I think it would be very, very helpful for those who were with us today. So yes, thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Have... Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so if you don't have any questions, guys, I think that would be all for today. Please stay tuned for other webinars that we are having uh, here at Cell Screen. Uh, yes, it was amazing uh, to have this webinar, and I hope it was it was really uh, interesting and insightful for you. Thank you so much uh, for coming. Thank you. Have a beautiful day.